Now, let's do the AM news now. The Ghana Road Transport Coordinating Council, GRTCC, is lashing out at transport operators, describing as misplaced agitations over a proposed 10% fare reduction. The GPR2 and the GRTCC, in a statement, proposed a reduction of public transport fares by 10% to accommodate for the continuous fall in the price of petroleum products observed over the period. This has been welcomed by some commuters who spoke to Joy News here in Accra. Some drivers are, however, unhappy about the reduction. The crisis, that's what I think. Well, if everything was engineered by the politicians, then it is a step in the right direction. But the sustainability is what matters. If they will be able to you know, hold on to it and then take pragmatic measures in order to you know, sustain it. While many of the commuters here are so happy that transport fares are going down, many of the transport operators themselves are not happy with the proposed reduction of 10%. That 10%, they, they, are, they have to do more than that. Uh -huh, that 10%, uh, we don't see anything of that 10%. That 10% didn't do anything. Uh -huh. Because now the economy is there. It's too, it's too hard. So it's too small. Too small. At least 40% or 30%. We are using engine oil, brave food, spare parts, ties, and other things. So if they say we should reduce it by 10%, they must make sure that those things which I mentioned too should go down by 10%. We are going to lose totally. It came for the first time that we should re reduce a uh, uh, fare. We reduce it to a certain level. We didn't hear anything about foodstuffs and many other things. Today you are telling us that there is another reduction, so reduce, reduce a lot of fare. While commuters and transport operators have divided opinion on the decrease of transport fares in the country, Business owners here at Abu Sokai say they feel no positive impact at all on the exchange rate and other indices in the business they do. No, I've not seen any positive about it. This one we buy it at uh, 250, but now it's 500 to uh, 550. Well, I'm not feeling any impact because the prices of my products is still going up day by day, so I don't think. The dollar has come down. It's still rising. Reporting from Abosoka here in Accra, my name is Carlos Caloni. For we will go into details of this particular story later on and on the show. Now, to other stories. The Office of the Special Prosecutor is said to open a formal probe into content of Professor Kripfrimpong Boating's report on illegal mining. The former Environment, Science and Technology Minister, who also served as the chairman of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, provided more details on his expose when he appeared before investigators at the Office of the Special Prosecutor. There is more in this news desk report. On April 20, a leaked report compiled by Professor Frimpong Boateng had the former minister name some top government officials as being complicit in the illegal mining menace. My report was not to indict anybody, but just to tell the one who asked me to write the report, the problems that we face and what I think should be done it may not be a perfect report, but I stand by everything that I, I wrote. You know, everybody, every Ghanaian is committed. We should show our commitment in the way we act. And eventually, the final analysis, the state of the water body, the state of the forest, and all these things will tell us whether we are committed or not. We can say anything, we can investigate anything we want, but in the final analysis, we have to look at what is happening on the ground, and then uh, we can take our own decisions. In the report, the renowned heart surgeon indicated that the rot goes as high as the seat of government, the Jubilee House. Professor Vimpong Boateng stressed that the allegation of some 500 mason excavators seized from illegal miners in 2020 were fabrications of some persons in government to get him sacked. Following the claim, there were calls from a session of the Ghanaian Society for the state security agencies to look into the report. Subsequently, President Akufado asked the Ghana Police Service to probe the matter. Today, before the investigators of the special prosecutor, Professor Frimpong Boateng provided response to activities and expenditure of the dissolved interministerial committee on illegal mining related to the seizure and management of excavators, machinery, road vehicles, and gold nuggets. But Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Godfrey Damien, says the content of Professor Boateng's report does not tell the whole story. Preliminarily, I will indicate that, or it suggests that it is not the full perspective of issues. 
that were addressed by the respected professor. Mm -hmm. And it's just his view on certain matters. Mm -hmm. And it's been put through the processes. I understand that there are some petitions as such and um, um, social procedures office. That is the process that we all have to subscribe. However, I insist the work of the Interministerial Committee helped in addressing the damage to the environment caused by mining firm Imperial Heritage. I think the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining has succeeded in seizing the equipment of Heritage Imperial. For me, it lies foul in the mouth of any person to um, criticize the actions of uh, the IMCM at that time. And if the attenderer has, with all respect or in all humility, proactively taking steps to have the judgment set aside and all, it should be something that we should uh, really uh, appreciate and not um, criticize and, and, and even question why that had been done by the High Court itself. Some agitated staff of Gihok Distilleries are demanding the immediate removal of their managing director, Maxwell Kofi Juma. According to them, his incompetence in managing the company has led to a dip in the revenues of the company. They are also accusing him of delaying payment of their salaries, SNIT benefits and other entitlement, which they say is affecting their livelihoods. They therefore believe his removal from office and allowing a new management to take over will improve the performance of the company. There is more in the following report. The workers who appeared visibly unhappy about their conditions of service guarded outside the premises of the company to register their displeasure. Their demand is for the payment of their salaries, SNIT benefits, Provident Fund and other entitlements. Despite these demands, they also want the managing director of the company, Maxwell Kofi Juma, removed because of incompetence. The challenge is that we have our SNIT has not been paid, our Provident Fund has not been paid for almost 18 months now. So this is what we are fighting for. We are not fighting the management and we are not fighting the managing director. So this morning that we have police people on our premises here and then doing that, doing this, we don't know what is happening. The CIA has said, yeah, 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 demonstration. Yeah, you may be named to tell you. Na ya pape obe yare ye. Na oko kakra na MC. Ebe so adwumani mu within 2 weeks. Enyo ma bia toto na akwa mu. Ama akoyi e kakra fine. Se se no ye se ya pe IMC. Ntio ndwan kwa tena se ye betu ya ne ka. Na ye ma IMC no. En kra adwuma no no mu nya na because 2 weeks ni ye salary ya come 2 months ni ye ntio ya ye ka ye. MD. MD ba ye no. Obo ye. Nsu bebi nu. Why? Debentina, why? Why, sir? Because me, my wallet, no, I didn't know. I come, Uchai, two months pay. I didn't throw Uchai because me, I didn't, a seven man, I come, I come, I come, I come, I come, I go school. Oh, I don't call for enjoy. You catch us, I say, we are, I won't take. Although management of Gayhawk distilleries were unavailable for a response to the concerns of the workers. At the time Joy News visited the scene of protest, one Nana Hima, who identified herself as a sales supervisor, told Joy News the actions by the staff were unwarranted. They just wake up and they are doing a um, demonstration against the MD. They should bring their paying slips from last year. They should bring their paying slips from 2018 or 2019. And then you see how much they were taking and how much they are taking now. How much they were taking in 2019 and how much they are taking now? Ungrateful people. So are you saying that their concerns are not legitimate? They needed not to... Uh... Every company is going through challenges. Every company is going through challenges. Not just MD, not just Gihok. Every company, they are going through challenges. Not uh, Gihok alone. So, so how, how do you intend to solve their problems? We are, we are solving our problems by increasing our, uh, how do you call it, our sales. The sales is not going. If you sell, we bring money. But we are not selling. If you are not selling, how can we give you how somebody that you are taking less than 1,000 Ghana City? Now you are taking more than 1,000. And you are being ungrateful. Meanwhile, the workers were later called back to the yard of the company by management for a meeting. Reporting for Joy News, Samuel Mbura, Accra. Meanwhile, management of the company has described the actions by the aggrieved workers as a sabotage. 
Nana Kwesi Edu Bofo, a sales manager of Gayhawk Distilleries. Why? The very people doing the agitation, they are from the technical and part of them are production staff. And do you know why I mentioned the technical? Not too long ago, the board dissolved an IMC. That is the Interim Managerial Committee. When the uh, Honorable Kofi Juma was on sick leave, the board members instituted a uh, committee to steer the affairs in his absence. And the technical manager, right, was one of the MC, uh, IMC, uh, whatever, committee. Why did the people not state demonstration when the IMC was in, uh, was in the seat? Are you getting it? Why do they decide to study upon the assumption of Honorable Masoko Juma today? So what happened three weeks ago? That was different from today. So how long has the MD been away? He's been away for two months. Only two months. You know, his sickness are on and off. So with this, the past two months, that he saw that the he need uh, whatever, uh, sick leave, so that he can see to himself. Uh, are you getting it? So he's been away for just six weeks or almost two months. So why, why, or what do you think maybe the motive behind the demonstrating or protesting the day that the MD who went on a sick leave resumed work? I, I don't know. Believe you me, I don't know. But if you will tell me if there is any element of sabotage, I will say yes. Because if indeed their grievances are genuine and they want to do it right, why did they wait till the assumption of MD so today? Where is the sabotage coming from? Believe him, I will, say, I will say it rightly and I will say it once again. The sabotage is coming from the IMC, IMC the Interim Emerging Committee that was instituted by the Board of Directors, that was dissolved last night. Why do you think so? Oh, why do I think so? Why were the people did not stage the demonstration three weeks ago or yesterday that decided to do it today? Why do they decide to do the demonstration today but not when the IMC was sharing the affairs of the company? I think someone is interested in the MD's position? I'm telling you, someone is very much interested, especially the FC. And you know the ironic part of the whole situation? That FC was employed by Omar Kofijuma uh, two years ago. In fact, he brought his application two years back. He was begging the man to uh, have a work for him because he's not working and things are not very right with him. Now, is that the way you need to treat your employer? Somebody that give an employment and they ask you to hold for the fault for me. Why is someone sick leave? To some politics now, and Vice President Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia says he is convinced the NPP can break the eight. Addressing delegate in Techiman on Tuesday, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who has already met majority MPs to communicate his interest to lead the party into the 2024 elections. So the elected flag bearer of the opposition NDC is an old foe whom the MPP knows how to defeat. He called for unity ahead of the 2024 general elections. <laughs> will be voting in 2024 and we all believe that the people, by the grace of God will break the eight. The person the NDC is bringing is still the old foe we all know. We know how to beat them. All that we want is for everyone to allow unity to prevail in the party. When we unite, we will win. We will break the eight. So every one of you should focus on the MPP breaking the eight. It is possible. An agreed member of the opposition National Democratic Congress, the NDC, Douglas Mensah, who filed a suit at the Sunyai High Court to stop the party from conducting Saturday, May 13, parliamentary primaries in the Banda constituency, is confident of winning the court case and eventually the elections. He accused regional party executives of plotting against his bid to represent his constituent and adds that incumbent MP Ahmed Ibrahim would lead the party to opposition after winning the 2020, 2020 polls with a vote difference of 39. The case, which will be heard on Wednesday, May 17, at the Sunyai High Court, will determine whether there will be a contest or Ahmed Ibrahim would go on a post. And as Sabet has more. The Bumis region is traditionally an NDC dominated area with a party currently occupying eight out of the region's 11 parliamentary seats and with the party 
heading towards its internal primaries ahead of the 2024 polls, more efforts are being put in place to ensure that the party's Agenda 1111 is achieved. The Dechiman South constituency is currently one of three constituencies in the hands of the NPP and extra work needs to be done to ensure that the NDC wins it back after losing out to the NPP in the 2016 and 2020 elections. Dr. Wal Mohammed, who is facing stiff opposition from two other aspirants on Saturday, is confident that he has what it takes to unseat the famous Deputy Local Government Minister Martina J. Mensa Corsa when given the nod by the delegates. What I'm bringing differently is that I have been within the constituency, unlike him who has not stayed within the constituency, I've been in the constituency all my life and I've been uh, with the people. Then again, I've also, uh, within my own shot, I've been able to uh, help for some young men who have more jobs because I've brought Pradyat Sechman and I've stood behind them. So if you come to the youth, I have 2,500 their leader. And so you can see that this one is going to translate into votes. Besides, I'm going to repeat the history in Techman South. Techman, and we always have this history that somebody who is always seen as a lesser known person always comes to unseat a bigger one. And this tells you that Techman South, we don't have that. We will look at people who are within the constituency and who, are, who serve you. And I know that I will have served Techman South. And Techman, we are going to do everything possible and unseat the deputy minister. For that one, we don't have any fear at all. Another aspirant who is likely going to need to do extra work should he win the primaries on Saturday to go to parliament is Johnson Mohamed Bapobe, who will have to battle it out with the current deputy rules minister, Stephen Jalula, for the Pru West seat. Because in Pru West, the seat has always been for NDC. We lost the seat for the first time to an MPP candidate. All we need is unity. And I'm very sure with unity of purpose, Prowess, we are going to gain our seat back. Despite the fact that a high profile personality like Jalula is a deputy road minister, I am very sure that when top man is elected on 13th, we are going to unite, fight him, and claim the seat back, inshallah. The Kintabo South seat is the third of three constituencies currently in the hands of the NPP, and Ahina Champon is optimistic that he has what it takes to recapture the seat which was lost to the NPP for the first time in the year 2020. I think Kintampo South uh, is a constituency that has been a traditional NDC uh, seat. Unfortunately, we lost the seat for the first time. Now, uh, as a candidate and as a, a, a staunch member of the NDC, we are bent on reclaiming that seat uh, because when we lost the seat to the MPP, we cannot say or tell or show any development or anything, any good thing that the party has done uh, in the constituency. And so the youth are poised for a change. They're looking for someone who has the competence and who can do the work for them. Uh, as we have come uh, to learn and to go through the training, we are going to protect every vote. We are going to make sure that the vote and the voice of the people are heard. And I know that um, Ahena Champion is going to emerge. Incumbent Member of Parliament for Kintampo North, Joseph Kuma, popularly known as Jakala, who increased the party's vote difference from 45,000 to over 60,000, is confident of retaining his seat and asks that the five others aspiring to represent the party on Saturday are only doing so to announce their presence in the party. My chances by the grace of God are so bright. This is a young man who served his party for close to 12 good years. And based on the records I have by serving the rest, when it got to my turn, the vote in Kintampo North increased from a 45,000 margin to 16,460. Yakala is a grassroots person, and so oh, oh, every Tom Dick and, and every person within the constituency knows who Joseph Kwame Kuma is, and so the volume of votes. Now, my brothers who have come out to contest me, yes, for me, positively, I think they have come to make themselves popular. Reporting for Joy News. And as Sabit, teach me. To other stories now, and the majority of people infected with rabies in the Ashanti region are dog owners who suffered dog bite. 
The region recorded 12 fatal cases last year, with four of them recorded in the last quarter. Unfortunately, the cost of rabies vaccines and apathy among dog owners in vaccinating their dogs means many dogs are left unvaccinated. Over 6,000 dogs are being targeted in an anti-rabies vaccination exercise in the Bosomche district, one of the areas noted for high incidence of dog bite in the region. There is more in the following report by Ohiming Teria of our health desk. Rabies infection usually occurs following a deep bite or scratch from an animal with rabies. Transmission to humans by rabid dogs accounts for up to 99% of cases in Ghana. Ex transmission can be stopped through vaccination. Asantea Chim South, Bosomche and Kwabri East are some of the latest districts that recorded rabies cases in 2022. According to the Ghana Health Service, people infected with rabies in the Ashanti region, majority being dog owners who suffered dog bites, have all died. Dr. Mabel Abudu is the regional director of the veterinary services. We had 77 specimens and then 38 out of the specimens we received were positive and then 36 negative and the human involvement were about 43 persons available. But the challenge is that people don't feel the need to pay. It's expensive. When you go to the hinterlands, you may have somebody having about 10, 15 dogs. Even if you are charging 10 cities per dose, and then he's having 15, 150 Ghana cities, he will not do. And all these are adding up to the numbers. Bosomchi, one of the rabies endemic districts, recorded two rabid deaths from 103 dog bites last year alone. A collaboration between the Ghana Health Service and the Veterinary Services with the support of UK-based Mission Rabies will see 6,000 dogs in the area vaccinated free of charge. A downpour on day one of the two-week exercise will not stop the seven teams of vaccinators in the adult-to-door activities. Dr. Timothy Chumesi Mensah is Health Director for Bosomche District. We are really appreciative of this thing, this support that we are getting for Mission Rabies to vaccinate every dog in this district and it is free. And that is why it's very important to us. And it's also important because we get a lot of dog, of dog bites. Last year, we had 103 dog bites reported in our facilities. And you know, part of our district, they assess health in Kumasi. So we are looking at only those who reported at our facilities. And out of this total number, we had only two rabid deaths. Even though it is a lot, we feel that were it not because of this vaccination that has been happening, we might have probably experienced more deaths. That's why, in spite of the rains and everything, we are still out there giving out these free vaccines to every dog in the district. A pilot project in 2029 in the Bosomchen district by the Mission Rabies, saw the vaccination of over 4,000 dogs from Kumasi. For Joy News, I'm Interior reporting. And that's how we wrap up the news on the AM show. There's more on myjawline.com. Stay with us because we have more for you on the show this morning.